So, I'm going to paint some of these dudes to prove that it doesn't take long. Um, I've already done the bases. Uh, spray under them white, flat white uh, spray, spray paint from Bunnings. Uh, I use the white night stuff. This one right here. Um, some of the darker models I'll spray with black. Make sure you get the flat colour, not the gloss or the semi-gloss or satin. Definitely flat's the way to go. Um, I can go through the bases later. I just do them all at once. I prepared these with a bunch of other models. So I did them all at once instead of screwing around every time I had to paint a model, given that they're all the same. Alrighty, the paints I'm going to use are these ones here. These are, oops, sorry, these two here are pretty much equivalent. It's just a dark brown. I might need more than this, but these ones that off the top of my head, looking at the models, I think I might need. The paintbrushes, um, Citadel large brush. I really like large brushes because I'm lazy and it makes it faster. I'm not into super small detail unless I'm putting lots of time and effort in, um, which not with these, obviously. <clears throat> An alternative paintbrush I really rate are uh, the Back to Basics range. They're really useful because they're, oh, they're a high-end wargaming brush, but they also separate and then screw back inside themselves. So when you go to stores or mates places to do painting sessions, you don't have to worry about wrecking the tips. Alrighty, um, wash is the way to go. Um, I'm going to start with the lighter areas that are larger, and then if I screw it up, I can fix it up on the other areas. Uh, let's see if you can see my palette. Maybe, yep, somewhere over here. Oh. <coughs> um, so this is the green, whatever it was, Castilian green. Uh, a bit of that. And then I water it down to make kind of like a really thick wash. Alright, so this is the light, well, heavy sort of wash I've done. Gives that sort of look to the model. You can see a little places where the paint's kind of bubbled off because I put the wash on a little bit too light. I'll just go back and toast it up as I'm doing the other ones. But again, not a whole lot of attention paid to not getting it everywhere. Not super fast. I've just, the idea is if you start with the light colours, the darker colours will hide the mistakes on the lighter colours as you go. I might have to touch up on the chin there just because the lighter face is going to show that up. Um, so I guess just be a bit more careful there, but the darker jackets and stuff and cloaks are going to hide the rest of it, so that's not a huge issue. Alrighty, so you can see how it's looking there. If I can get the focus right on the camera. The first one, that's the first one I've done there. I think I had the wash a little bit too thick. So it's not, where's my paintbrush? It's not really, when you look at these ones, you've got more of the contours and stuff. It's just seeped in better. Around the legs, gives more definition if you do it too thick. I'm going to leave it like that because, again, I'm lazy and I just want to have these done. Um, Alrighty, I'm going to do the flesh. I really should have done it first. This is a Talon flesh. I'm not sure if that'll go dark enough or whether it'll still look really washed out and pale. So that's why I put this sepia, which is actually a wash, um, in there as well. So I might do a coat of that afterwards if it doesn't work. Alrighty, so these little guys are done. Oop, some folks there. I'm pretty happy with how dark that is. They do look a bit pale, but... Oh, wow. Happy enough with that. You can start to see like the crevices in there, especially on the pants there, the washes, that effect that has. It's probably a better shot. Um, so now when we start doing the darker colours, you've got to be, be a bit more careful because obviously you can't overflow onto the lighter colours. Um, so I might go down a brush, which is for me my back to basics one. Um, and I'm going to use a dark brownie black. Keep in mind that when you wash, obviously the colours become a lot lighter. So typically you want to start with a darker colour. So obviously that's the darker brown that I'm going to go with, and you're looking at the green there, it's quite dark. It does come out quite light on the figure. Obviously you can darken that up, as we said, with multiple coats, or just mix it a bit thicker as a wash. Um, I have got one over the guns, again, that doesn't matter, because I'm going to do the guns last. I just like putting those out in just a flat black, I don't even wash those, I just like them black. 
um, it kind of contrasts the miniature, the block, thick black colour. And that's what they are in some of the movies. Maybe pick out a couple of the details on the gun with a bit of silver. Um, but we'll do the brown for now. Alrighty, so this is my little man now, with the brown done. Again, I've kind of painted over a lot of areas, like on the helmet there. Then I'm going to come back and paint over with a darker colour. So I think I'm pretty much done with the washes now. So it's kind of a bit of a hack job, like the joins, I haven't really kept the lines 100%. You can kind of see, sorry I almost cloaked there. But I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so now, I think the important bit now is getting nice sharp lines on the block colours because that will make the model still look, I don't know, sharp and refined. If you just wash the whole thing then you don't get the sharp refined look. So that's why I like to pick out the guns in the black. But on this model, oh, that strap on the helmet, which you can see in this photo here, it's kind of a bluish grey as well, but that'll grab your eye. So if that's a nice sharp colour. I think it'll make the model look a bit more professional. So, I've got, I don't have a grey blue, but I think these two, some sort of mix of those two, and just a flat colour, no watering down a wash or anything, paint that on there. And then, while I'm at it, I'm just going to do a black flat coat on the guns, and we're nearly there. Okay, so I'm going to wash the flesh and then draw some bands on the side of his helmet to mark the squad members. A bit more defined with the wash, um, but all in all, that's about 20 minutes work for three painted dudes. Taking out the time I spent talking about it, um, I might do... Just a grey, I've got a silver paint, just a dry brush, I'm sure you guys know what a dry brush is, just over the end of the gun and maybe the scope, just to give the gun, because it is quite large, so I think that flat's maybe too big for flat colour, um, and that'll break it up a bit, but just obviously being careful not to paint anywhere else, just like across the end of the brush, sorry, across the end of the gun, and then just down the scope with a really light grey dry brush. Um, so a dry brush obviously is where you wipe the brush until there's not much paint left and as you drag it across the dark surface it'll just stick to the stuff that's sticking up the highest um, so it's kind of like a really lazy man's way of highlighting but also very fast alrighty pretty happy with those little dudes you can see the silver on the gun um, so I'm going to leave it there with those uh, and I thought just to prove that I'm not a terrible painter all the time I'd put up a picture of this gun these are some of my old Warhammer models. Um, so the difference is obviously this model here has probably got about six to ten hours in it, maybe. Um, whereas obviously this is twenty minutes for three. So it's all a matter of how much time you've got and what have you. But for me, it's I'd rather have painted stuff than not at all. Alrighty, guys, thanks for watching. And there's a bit of a final shot of them, because I didn't get a particularly good one on the last one. Hopefully that focus can get right. Yeah, and um, I'll, if you uh, think it's worthwhile, I'll do a few more. Keep